lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. Hello. Today is a magnificent day filled with possibilities. And I hope that this day has met you with a smile. My name is Arpatrice Bryant, and I am a gospel artist from Bridgeport, Connecticut. I stopped by really quick to tell you about the Pastor's Corner. Listen, my big brother, Overseer Ernest Richard, has a very passionate and stimulating discussion filled with real-life wisdom. This happens every Thursday evening at 10 p.m. right here on Elations Radio. I hope you'll tune in and be tremendously blessed because you're already favored because the sun is shining in your life.
And now it's time for our fateful financial moments with Sister Sharon Richard. Hi, everybody. I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. Affectionately known as the world's greatest storyteller, Dorothy Norwood used her soulful vocals and uplifting delivery to rise to the top of contemporary gospel music. Five of her albums achieved gold status. Her studio work also garnered her a Grammy, Dub, and Stellar Award nomination. Dorothy was born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1935 and was touring and performing with her family at the age of eight. After moving to Chicago in 1956, she sang with Mahalia Jackson and Reverend James Cleveland and was a member of the Caravan. During the mid-60s, she launched a solo career with Savoy Records and was a hit from the very start. With her 1964 debut solo album, Johnny and Jesus, she earned her first gold record certification from RIAA. Her second album, A Denied Mother, released in 1966, did equally as well. An opportunity to bring her music beyond the church came in 1972 when she opened for the Rolling Stones during a 30-state tour of the U.S. One of the most prolific gospel artists, Norwood regularly released new material through the 70s and 80s that was given another boost in the 1990s. She signed with Malico in the 1990s. Her first recording was live with the Northern California GMWA Mass Choir. It peaked at number three on Billboard's Gospel Charts. By the start of the 2010s, Dorothy made more albums for Malico than she had for Savoy. An Incredible Journey released in 2014 and supported by appearances from Bashan Mitchell, Dorinda Clark Cole, and Melvin Williams, among others. It missed the top of the gospel charts by one spot. New Orleans, Louisiana's own P.J. Morton, is a versatile keyboardist, songwriter, and producer known for his gospel, pop, and R&B albums, as well as his studio work with other performers. Emerging in the early 2000s, Morton gained early notice working with artists like Kiara Sheard, Dwayne Woods, and Music Soul Child before issuing his own albums such as 2013's Grammy-nominated album, New Orleans, and 2017's Grammy-winning album, Gumbo. Since 2010, he's been a member of Maroon 5 and has contributed to many of the group's albums, including 2012's Overexposed, 2014's V, and 2017's Red Pill Blues. The son of fellow gospel recording artist Bishop Paul S. Morton and Pastor Deborah Brown Morton, P.J. Morton was born in New Orleans in 1981. He played music growing up and eventually majored in marketing at Morehouse College, graduating in 2003. During this period, he launched his music career, releasing an album with his short-lived group, Freestyle Nation, and contributing to NDRE's Grammy-winning album in 2002 entitled Voyage to India. Chandler David Moore is a native of Charleston, South Carolina, currently based in Atlanta, Georgia. He is the son of Bishop Brian and Elder Jamita C. Moore, often referred to as a modern-day King David. Chandler is a worship leader, songwriter, and instrumentalist. Although his creative calling takes him around the globe, Chandler commits himself to leading the production department of his church, All Nations Worship Assembly of Atlanta. Chandler is currently partnered with Maverick City, a collective of worshipers committed to deconstructing unspoken rules that exist in the CCM and gospel world. Chandler's pursuits are pretty simple, and that is to live life worthy of the call he's been trusted with. Here's this week's Top 10 Gospel Songs. Number 10, Charles Jenkins in Fellowship Chicago, He'll Make It All Right. 9, Fred Jerkins featuring Lowell Pye, Patiently Crazy. 8, Group Fire, More Than Friends. 7, Jonathan McReynolds and Mally Music, Moving On. 6, Galante Gavin, Hold Me Close. 5, James Fortune and Lisa Knowles, Nobody Like Jesus. Number 4, Kirk Franklin, Strong God. 3, Juan and Lisa Winans featuring Marvin L. Winans with It Belongs to Me. Number two, Marvin Sapp, Thank You for It All. And our new number one song comes from Tamala Mann, Touch From You. 
Well, that is your top 10 gospel songs for this week and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor, reminding you to connect with me on all social media outlets and write me at the gospel news with Nina at gmail.com. And don't forget my website, msninataylor.com. Now, let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News Reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. And of course, here, my great friend, Nina Taylor, every Thursday evening at 10 p.m., right here on The Pastor's Corner. I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard Jr., a.k.a. Preacher 719. And before we move any, well, any, any further, I'm going to ask my wife to come and do her faithful financial moments. We had a little technical difficulty, and I know she should have been up and we do apologize to you, but we do not want you to miss your faithful financial moment, especially in this day and in this day. So today, if you just come forward, we'll do it right here. We're going to do it live today, folks. Come on. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Act like you give her a hand so she can give. <laughs> yeah, I'm not much for camera. Um, I prefer not to be on camera most of the time. That's just not my my, my natural gifting. Not what I I love to do. I kind of tend to want to be in the background. But technical difficulties with my my phone uh, have gotten me to this particular position at this particular time. Um, so, um, thank you for joining us, um, and this is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moment. Are you teaching your children basic money management principles? How many of us went out on our own for the first time with no knowledge of the concept of budgeting and spending within our means? There are some things that you can do to help your children become strong money managers early on. One of the first things you want to do is help children to learn the differences between needs, wants, and wishes. This will prepare them for making good spending decisions in the future. When they ask for something, take the time to challenge them to discover the difference. Encourage your children to set goals for themselves. People rarely reach goals they haven't set. Nearly every toy or any other item that children ask their parents for, they can buy them, uh, but it can become the object of a goal-setting session. When giving children an allowance, give them the money and denominations that encourage saving. And teach your children the principles of tithing, so that at the same time that you give them an allowance, challenge them to also tithe and give something to the church or another organization as well. This will help them to make it a practice early on to tithe and to save before determining the monies available for spending. Take children to a credit union or to a bank to open their first uh, savings account. Beginning the regular savings habit early on is one of the keys to saving success. You can also introduce children to U.S. savings bonds, particularly during this holiday season as you ponder what gifts to give your children, consider giving them savings bonds. Bonds are still good value, costing one half of their face value and earning interest that in some instances will be tax-free if used for a college education. Perhaps more importantly, when given as a gift, bonds will not be spent immediately, reinforcing saving and goal-setting lessons. Keeping records of money saved, invest, invested or spent, is another important skill to teach your children. Encourage children to place receipts from all purchases in an envelope and keep notes on what they do with their money. Perhaps show them how to set up a tracking schedule on their tablet or computer. 
This will provide them with a strong foundation for budgeting as they get older. You should also allow your children to make spending decisions. Whether good or poor, they will learn from their spending choices. You can then initiate an open discussion of spending pros and cons before making spending, before any spending takes place. This involves selecting at least three other things that the money could be spent on, uh, or and, and or they could also consider setting the money aside. So force them to make choices, to make decisions, to evaluate different alternatives. This will help them as they mature. The most sustainable habits are those that are started early and reinforced regularly. As Proverbs 22 and 6 tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is Sharon Richard with your faithful financing moment. Amen, amen. Thank amen, you so much amen. for your heart. We do apologize. Well, we want to welcome you to the pastor's party. I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard. We are actually in the sanctuary today, and uh, I wanted to try something new because I've been getting reports that our audio has been terrible over the last few weeks. So we decided to come into the, into the uh, studio and uh, see if we can get a better a better read and a better feed when it comes to our oil. So let me get my panelists in here. I'm excited about tonight. We have a very special treat for you. And I don't want you to go anywhere because, oh, my God, just enjoy yourself. Up first, my brother from another mother out of Augusta, Georgia, the pastor of Prophetic uh, Ministries. A prophetic Dimension Ministry down there in Augusta, Georgia. We've been together for over 26 plus years, and God has blessed him to be my co-host, the most stable co-host, I might add, in the last seven, six years, excuse me, none other than Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr. Blessings to you, my brother. How are you? What's up, Brian? What's up, Brian? Yes, name of Jesus, the Lord, allow us to come together one more time. And we must give God all his praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, that must be the African bishop from Mexico with the chicken accent. <laughs> all right. Come back right behind him. A little time, brother, and friend. We grew up together uh, in the city of Spain and met each other. I know I hear a lot of background noise, and I'm praying that we can get that straightened out, Sister Timmy Kim. Let me introduce the song and present to others, none other than the Chief Apostle of Morning Star, Bible of the Book Church, and the Bible of the Book Conference International, Chief Apostle Vincent L. Smith. Blessings to you, sir. How are you? Hello. Hi, hello, hi, hello, (laughs) hello, hi, I'm Mickey, 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 Mickey. Help of Jesus. Blessings to you, sir. How are you? All is well, and we're waiting Amen for this knockout word tonight. Well, don't go far, sir, because I'm going to have you do the introductions in just a few short minutes. Let me finish getting the rest of the panel in here. This next individual is new to the crew. She's been with us for a short time, but she's dynamite packed in a small package. We call her the quiet storm. Y'all come on and let's welcome in evangelist Anna Henderson. Bless you, my sister. How are you? Bless. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to be on the panel tonight with everyone in Jesus' name. Hey, many, 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 many. Now, I always save this next person for last, and I do that on purpose because I honestly love her to life. And since we met, People can't believe that you can meet people by way of social media and become brother and sister and not be a stalker or anything of that nature. I want y'all to say hello to our producer, 
our, all of our, I'm talking about everybody on this panel, our second best friend, because Jesus is our best friend, Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Bless you, my sister. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored. How are you guys doing on tonight? Well, we know that. Now, now that we know you here. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway. Let's, let's begin to rumble. All right. All right. Now, I want to check to see if there's anybody else on the line that we may have missed. Uh, sometimes we do get guests that we didn't realize were going to be coming in. And I want to ask those of you by Facebook to Please uh, excuse our appearance. Like I said, I needed a better quality sound, and I really did not set up our studio where we do our church services from. I just brought in the Pastor's Corner banner and kind of set them up simultaneously because there are two different cameras working today. We welcome you, our social media audience. Thank you for coming in. We also welcome those of you who are here by way of radio, whether it's iHeart Spricker, whether it's uh, Spotify, whether it's the... Uh, Oh, God, help me say this. Whether it's the, uh, ooh, 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 I still ain't got it yet. Uh, uh, the Google, uh, it's Google app, uh, and also I'm trying to think of YouTube. That's who I'm trying to say. We welcome you for coming in today. Thank God for you being with us. But tonight, we have a very special treat. And without further ado, I'm going to ask you, Apostle Smith, if you will introduce our special guest every second uh, Thursday of the month, we bring in a featured ministry, someone that's going to share a word that's going to bless your heart. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, man, I'm sneezing today. Good. Anyway, someone's going to bless your heart. So what we want to do is turn it into the hands of Apostle Smith that he may introduce our guest preacher for tonight, and we'll give him whatever time he needs and whatever God lays upon his heart. Without further ado, Apostle Smith, would you please do the honors? It gives me great pleasure tonight, first of all, to be asked to bring this man of God to the forefront and seeing that one of his uh, laborers, one of his uh, one of his children is on the phone, but I thank God for this opportunity to bring him to our forefront, meeting him a few years ago, and immediately we were brothers, we were friends, co-laborers, and men of God looking towards the same goals and purposes in the body of Christ. He is the pastor of the Jerusalem temple, Apostolic Church, a band of 21, 25, uh, I don't forget the address, it is something, a man, uh, there in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we love the many things that God has blessed him to do there in Indianapolis, and even now, has a great community service going on every month where they feed the community, passing out boxes of food to make sure that people can survive during this pandemic age. Without further ado, I want you to get ready to hear an anointed servant of the Lord. That in the person of Bishop Derek Jefferson. Thank you, Apostle Smith, and we bring greetings in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, and I want to thank you for that great introduction. I want to thank uh, our host tonight, uh, Lady, I think, Kimmy Kim, I think I'm saying it right. If I don't get it right, please forgive me. Bishop Elect, uh, Richards, Apostle Whitlow, to Evangelist Henderson and all those that are listening in our audience, I bring greetings all the way from the Midwest, Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm so honored to be here this evening. I'm, I am so thankful, <clears throat> as Bishop uh mentioned earlier, how God brings people across our path. And this has been a great year um, 
even with this pandemic. I'm so thankful for the covenant relationship that God has extended in my life and our church ministry by the way the bishop led uh, Richards and two lady Richards and then Apostle Whitlow there in Georgia to your host, uh, uh, Lady Kitty Kim, and then my very good friend, my Apostle, Apostle Vincent Smith. So I thank God for all of you all, and thank you for allowing me this time to come and speak to each one of you all. I don't take it uh, lightly, but it's always an honor and privilege to be able to speak on the word of the Lord. I uh, was thinking about what should I say when I was asked to speak, and I'm not one of them preachers that got an itch that I just got to be heard and always trying to look for somewhere to speak, but as opportunity opened itself, I think that we all be doing whatever our hands find to do in the kingdom of God. Each month in our ministry, uh, especially since this uh, pandemic, COVID-19, one of the ways that we have been connected or staying connected to our ministry here in Indianapolis uh, is by um, each month we send out a news uh, letter to all of our members and to those who are part of our email list. And that's a way of just keeping the saints of God encouraged through the word of God. And so this month, which it just came out, <clears throat> just finished it up a few days ago, and I haven't even got it out to the saints, but I thought I would just share it tonight with the listening audience and pray that somebody will be blessed by it in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray first, and then I'm going to go right to the scripture and read it in your hearing. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for all your blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength, and thank you, God, for knowing who you are in our life. We are so honored and privileged, O oh God, for knowing that, God, you loved us with your everlasting love, and, God, you chose us before the foundation of the world. And now, oh God, we are your sons and daughters, and what an honor to be adopted into the body of Christ. I pray tonight, Lord, that something be said to edify, to lift your name up, to be glorified, God, and that someone will be helped as we minister the word of God tonight. Use us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to always realize without you we can't do anything. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight I'm going to read in your hearing uh, the scripture. Tonight it's going to be found in St. John, the 20, uh, no, the fifth chapter, and verses 1 through 9. A very familiar text for anyone that's been around church a little while. And I read like this. I read now the King James Version. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For angel went down a certain season into the pool, troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him rise, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Let me say that again. Jesus saw him rise. And knew that he had been now a long time, and here's the words, in that case, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? The important man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise. Take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. My subject tonight will be taken out of that verse, number six, the second clause, and knowing that he's been there for a long time, in that case. I want to talk about very briefly 
one of my former bishops used to say, you don't have to be long to be strong. Right. I want to use for a subject this evening, Jesus knows the case. Jesus knows the case. It was once said, my brothers and sisters, by one older seasoned bishop that I knew, he said, if you're more excited about where God brought you from more than where he's taking you to, you could be distracted and miss out where he's taking you to when it comes to your destiny. There's a time when you do look back and glorify God for previous victories that God has given you. So going forward, you may run into a roadblock. I want to say to you, you can't afford to be discouraged. You can't be. You can't afford to be stressed out. And the reason why, because you must remember where God brought you from. Not only from where God brought you from, my brothers and sisters, but you got to know what he's doing even now in your life because a writer wrote the song, if he did it before, he can do it again. Kircher said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I'm looking forward. I'm looking ahead. I'm trusting in God's word for what God is doing, even as all of us are facing this dark hour of COVID-19. God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29, 11, very familiar scripture, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The Messenger Bible states it like this, I know what's I know what I'm doing, and I have it all planned out, plans to take care of you, not abandon you, but plans to give you the future you hope for, the future that you hope for. He knows the case. In our scripture text that I read in your hearing, we find a man First of all, who was not named, his name was not that important, evidently. But this man was at the pool of Bethesda, which is called the house of mercy, the house of grace. And the scripture said it had five porches, which is biblical number five, mean grace. There with him, it said, was a multitude of impotent folks. The Bible said blind, halt, wither. And what they were doing, they were waiting on a phenomenal event. Four things they were waiting on, my brothers and sisters, like some of us. First of all, they were waiting on a season. They were waiting on an angel. They were waiting for the troubling of the, of the waters. And fourthly, they were waiting to step into the water and the Bible Said this man waited for this season for this angel for the trouble in the water to step in for 38 years. While he was waiting, all of a sudden one day he looked up and somebody showed up. Grace, mercy, and truth, the Messiah that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah 11 3, who said, And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But when Jesus showed up at this pool, he was not in a judgmental mode as to what he saw and knew that this man had been through for a long time. But the Bible said he knows the case. So he know what was going on. I'm saying to somebody this evening, God, in this pandemic, in this dark hour, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice, God knows our case. He's here, my brother and sister, and not only does he show up, but he, he, he's, he's here. Mercy shows up. Mercy sparks up a conversation asking the man, will thou be made whole? 
man answered Jesus only part of his story. He didn't tell him how he got there. He didn't tell him exactly what the injury was or the sickness, but he said he had no man to put him in the water, and others had stepped in before him. Jesus, again, being non-judgmental, showing mercy and grace, and told him, pick up your bed and walk. The man healing, the scripture said the man healing was immediately. He was made whole and picked up his bed and walked. I want to take a few moments this evening and say, is that just like Jesus? He shows up and he always shows out. Old mothers used to say, he may not come when you want him, baby. But he's all the time. I want to tell somebody this evening, God knows your case. He's going to show up. He's going to show out. And he may not come when you think he ought to come, but he's coming. Because he knows your case. That leads me to the biblical story of Christmas that's coming up that we're about to face. Because this, because of one man's sin, watch this, one man's sin and disobedience, the entire human family was born into a sin-sick world, spiritually impotent, spiritually blind, spiritually halt, and spiritually withered. And we all, in this human race, we were all waiting for a deliverer. That was promised in Genesis 3.15, and I will put into me, into me between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. Look at the prophecy. And thou shall bruise his heel. Talk about the seed of the righteous and the devil's seed. Watch this. As time went on, the whole creation remained waiting from Genesis 3.15, but God knows the case. Here we see, as we look at the Old Testament, Abraham was a great man, but his blood could not save us. It was tainted. Moses could not save us. His blood was tainted. Joshua, David, Solomon, or Samson could not save us. Their blood was tainted. Oh, one day, hallelujah, a Savior was born lowly in a small town named Bethlehem. The house of bread. A city of David in a manger in a stable. We as mankind could not get to God. So what God did, he humbled himself. Took on no reputation. Came no being. And he came to us. He knew our case. He knew we needed a redeemer. So John picked it up in the New Testament. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son to whosoever. And then whosoever is you, your mother, my father, my sister, your brother, your uncle, your auntie, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Aren't you glad this evening? Listen, that he bypassed senators, governors, presidents, and all the high elite folks, and he looked way down and looked beyond our folks. And saw our need because he knew our case and came directly to our rescue. I'm glad that he did it, brothers and sisters. He knows what we needed. So God, what he ended up doing in John 3, 16, he gave a gift. We're, we're about to face Christmas. But the greatest gift that mankind can ever celebrate is the gift of God who kept on giving. He's given us right now, even as we speak, every breath we get, every breath we have, he's giving it to us. Every activities of our limb, God's giving it to us. He lives, he moves through us. What a gift. This Christmas season, my brother and sister, we're about to face. We should have a heart of giving. For the Bible says in Acts 20, 20, 35, it is more blessed to give rather than to receive. Have you ever thought about giving the Lord a Christmas gift? Like the wise man did, the birth of Jesus, who brought him gift. But some would say he owns everything. What can I give him? Well, true. But the giving is for you more than for him because you know he owns everything. The blessing, my brother and sister, this evening of giving is for you. I'm going to challenge somebody this evening. I'll give you a scripture. Give. Luke 6, 38, and it shall be given unto you. 
Good pleasure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For this the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. I want to say to you, my brother and sister, I'm finished. God knows where we're at tonight. God knows what we're going through, but we're about to celebrate the greatest season, and that is Christ so loved the world that he gave. And this evening, my brothers and sisters, if you're still breathing, if you still got eyes to see, ears to hear, if you still got activities of your limbs, if you have all of them a part of them, whatever it is, you still owe God something. Now, as a matter of fact, my brothers and sisters, because he knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. But one writer wrote a song. It's only a test that we're going through. My brother and sister, this evening, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what anxiety you're facing. I don't know what depression you're facing. I don't know what's going on in your mind. But tonight, this is a season to give God thanks. This is a season to give God praise. This is a season to give God glory. This is a season to give back to somebody else. Because God gave his ultimate gift, and that was his son. 2020 will go down in history as a year of ultimately sickness, death, due to COVID-19, coronavirus, which is a pandemic. But this holiday season, my brothers and sisters, the writer wrote a song, if I can help somebody along the way, because God knows what you're going through, but if you can help somebody along the way, your living will not be in vain. I challenge you tonight, for those that's on this line, Apostle Whitlow, Apostle Smith, Bishop Elect, Richards, Lady Kim, those on this line, those that are serving our community, those who are trying to spread the gospel, I don't know, somehow, I'm not looking at Facebook or live, but somehow I'm going to ask Bishop Elect to put each one of their cash out or any way that you can sow into these ministries. These ministries are out trying to bless others with the word. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, my brothers and sisters, but the word, you can't live without the word. God knows what you're going through, but I challenge you tonight as we approach this Christmas season, quit looking at just what you're going through because he knows what you're going through. He knows your case. He knew for 38 years this man was trying to get into the pool. As I stated earlier, he may not come when you want to, but I want to challenge you. He's coming. He's going to rescue you. But God wants to see what you're going to do during the meantime. I'm challenging you this evening. As them cash out cash app go on the line in the boxes, wherever they put them at, whether they give it to you verbally over this conference tonight, I challenge you to sow into either of their lives tonight. Not mine, but these men who's on here who's doing the work of the kingdom. Sow into their life. Give, and it shall be given back unto you. How is he going to give it back to you? He's going to give it to you. Measure, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men. As you give to others, God will bless somebody else to sow into you. Let me give my testimony. I'm through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I took over a church here in Indianapolis, and I'm through. Our church this year celebrated 73 years. I took over a church third pastor, the church where I took it over 14 years ago, didn't even have $100 in the account. Matter of fact, the church was dwindling down because the pastor got no and sick, called me and asked me, son, I believe the Lord wants you to take over this church, and I never wanted to pastor, always been a servant. I wanted to serve pastors. I want to help somebody this evening. And what I did, I tried to run like Jonah. I went and got about seven of my friends who I knew had the itch to pastor, had the itch to preach. I called them. I said, hey, I know a gentleman that's trying to retire, give up his church because he's getting older and the church is dying down. And he needs somebody to succeed him. 
seven of my minister friends, I went to them, and I set up an appointment with them, with this pastor, took them out to dinner with this pastor to try to get them to take this church over because this man needed a successor. But he called me, and I said, no, I don't want to do it. One Saturday, I was coming back from Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, and he called me. He said, he called me DJ, Derek Jefferson. He said, DJ, what are you doing? I said, I'm on my way back into Indianapolis. He said, can you stop by the church for a minute? I said, yes, sir. Stop by the church. Never went inside the church. Been knowing them for quite some time as a kid. Grew up around this, our certain denomination. He like went to the church, got in the city. Never got in church and parked on the parking lot. He said, young man, I've been watching you for years. And I didn't know it because it let me confess. I didn't even like the man. <laughs> Save, sanctify, Holy Ghost still. But I did not like the man because he was very popular from the standpoint he was a businessman. Joe, nice, big, new cars, and lives in a nice house, own trucking company, 100 trucks. But as time went on, his the church itself was dying. He himself was pretty much well off, but the church was dying. And every time I would see him in different conferences, he was a big, tall, large man. Felt like he was snobby. Felt like he had arrived. And I'm like, who do he think he is? So I never really cared that much for him because, let me say this, I always have problems with ministers. Here I go, who feel like they have arrived and forgot where they come from and look down on people. Let me say to all of you all, don't you ever forget where you come from because it's the people who makes us who we are through Christ. But all we got to have a spirit in the heart of a servant. So I said all that to say this. So he asked me, he said, son, I believe the Lord wants you to take over for me. And he said, won't you pray to ask your wife, see if she who want to come and help me to take over. He said, give me just one year. I'll turn it over to you. If I ever heard the voice of the Lord, Apostle Vincent, it was that day. I drove off the parking lot. Didn't even go inside the church. Matter of fact, never been inside this particular church. I went in their old church when they before they moved there. Put off the parking lot. If I ever heard the voice of the Lord, the Lord told me, Derek, this is your destiny. I went home, talked to my wife, and the church would basically only have a few elderly members. My, 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 I went to my wife, and we was at a very thriving, youthful church. I was the church administrator. I said, dear Elder Carey wants me to take over Jerusalem Temple. I said, I believe God wants me to do it, but I said, I can't do it without taking my family with me. I said, and, and you and you have to agree. And I said, and second of all, it's a, it's a dead church. They had nobody. It's dried up, old people. My wife told me, if that's what the Lord is telling you to do, I'm in 100% in support with you. Well, I called him the next day and said, well, to carry my wife, said, whatever the Lord says. We went there. To make a long story short, he did not turn it over to me in the first year, and I wasn't in a rush. But one day he called me. I was a clear blue sky with our bishop of the state of the Pentecost Sins of the World. It was Bishop Tyson at the time, who was assistant presiding bishop. He called about three of the bishops and a couple of the overseers, and they came in. And he said, Derek, I want you to be there. I was in the in the office, and he looked at the bishop and said, see this young man here? I want him to take this church over, bishop. And however you do it, I want you to make it happen. The church, I had an assistant pastor. And... Um, I didn't want to have any kind of trouble, so I told the bishop, I said, Bishop, the assistant pastor been there a long time. I said, I'll tell you what, why don't we do it this way? Won't you run the assistant pastor up against me, give the church a choice? And if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. But I did not want no kind of conflict of the assistant pastor saying, I was here before you, and I should get it. Went through the process, and I got the vote. But here's my point. Give and it shall be given. My brothers and sisters, we had some rough times in the beginning stages of that church. A lot of things I did not know. Then nobody gave me the rule book how to do A, B, and C. So I was walking by faith, uh, not by sight. But walking by sight, sometimes I made some bad choices. But church went into some bad financial positions. I signed a contract with the church group out of Virginia, 
not knowing they almost signed the church away. And what they would do, they call themselves helping churches, but undercurrently they were taking churches away from people who could not afford to maintain maintain their church. One day or one month, I missed a payment, and immediately they came in and wanted to foreclose on our church. I really didn't even talk to the church about it. I took all the heat, took all the pressure. To this day, the church don't even know altogether. Our mother, Mother Taylor, I think, is online with us today, so this may be the first time she's hearing all of it. And for those that are else on Jerusalem Temple, this may be the first time they're hearing it, but I feel they had to say it tonight. And went to court, and the judge told me, he said, Reverend Jefferson, I understand we don't like churches to go under, but you did not read the dotted line, and this man can demand every dime out of you. We only owed at that particular time probably a hundred some thousand dollars, but because of all the interest and all the hidden stuff that this this group did under the name of Jesus Christ, we ended up having to pay two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars almost a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars more to redeem the church. I had less than twenty four hours to do it. I never will forget the former pastor before he died. He used to say, DJ, I wish I had you as my administrator before I gave up my business. You would have made a lot of money for me. He said, because you know how to connect with people. He said, DJ, if you ever get in trouble, here's a man that I know that you want to make sure you connect with him. His name was Robert Thompson. I thought he was an African-American man because Robert Thompson sounded like a black name. Well... When I left court that day, I want to help somebody and give, and it shall be given back to you, because God knows your case. God knew every He ordered out my steps, but you know I'm trying to look at it with my own sight. Well, I went into the church. I cried like a baby. I said, God, mm-hmm. I didn't ask for this. This is your church. These are your people. I don't want to fail you. I don't want to fail the community. I don't want to fail God. I I need an answer. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I went into a phone book that my former pastor would always keep. He always kept a little black book in his his pocket of his suit jacket. And he had, every year, he had a little black book with all the church member name in and all his business connection. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, Derek, Look up Mr. Robert Thompson's name and call him. Hope I ain't taking too long. I'm almost finished. He said, call this man. So I looked in the phone book, and I seen Robert Thompson. I called him. I said, Mr. Thompson, I, the man, gentleman answered the phone. Mr. Thompson, he said, yes. This is Reverend Jefferson. I said, I don't know if you remember me. I took over Jerusalem Temple from James Carey. Yes, James was my friend. He said, I said, I'm in a critical position. I need your help. Can you give me 20 minutes of your time? Because I need to talk to you. I got all my information together. Watch this. He said, Reverend Jefferson, I'm 80-something years old. I'm getting old. My mind is kind of slipping. And I don't do anything anymore with the business, but my son took it over, and his name is Robert Jr. Here's the number. Call him and see what he can do. He gave me the number and hung up, didn't even say bye. I immediately called Robert Jr. I called Robert Jr., and Robert Jr. worked at, well, he worked at all kinds of places, but he said, Reverend, I called Robert. I said, your dad gave me your number. I took over from Elder Carey, and he wants me to talk to you. I, 20 minutes of your time. He said, Reverend Jefferson, can you meet me at Gray Eagle Golf Course? I said, sure. I met him on a Wednesday. No, on a Friday. I gave him my case. Mm-hmm. I took all my information. I said, I'm, 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 I'm at a 24 or 48 hours Monday to get back to tell this court something, or we're going to lose everything. I walked into this man's office. Give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, press down, shake together. Run the arrow, man, give it to your bosom. I walked in his office, told him what I needed, and I said, Here go all the pictures. He said, I don't want to see nothing. He said, Where's the church at? I told him where the church was. 
He said, can I meet you there Monday? I said, yes, sir. I walked in the church with him on Monday. I'm through. He said, Pastor Jefferson, you can't lose this church. He said, go find your banker. Tell them that Robert Thompson, watch this, told me to tell them that whatever I need for the bank to give it to me, he'll sign off on it. I went to the bank. I told the banker, I said, I'm about to lose this church. I got a cold signer named Robert Thompson. The bank said, are you talking about Robert Thompson of Gray Eagle Golf? I said, yes. They said, do you know him personally? I said, no. They said, look him up. But they said, if he sent you, we'll do it. Make a long story short. That man walked in the church that day and said, Reverend Jefferson, we're not going to let you lose the church. We went to the bank. I needed my brother and sister. And watch this. I, I, I've been serving pastors and people of God for years. But I knew, God, you called me to this. You know the case. You know what I'm going through. I've been here. 14 years, and back then, well, we've been about three or four years old now. I've been here. I'm facing a dilemma. Somebody else always getting in front of me. Nobody's here to help me, Lord, but I need you. I met your mercy. I met your grace. But God knew my case, my brothers and sisters, and I want to emphasize to you all, he knows your case. He has the answer. You just got to trust him. This man walked in. Not only did he refinance our church, hear me, but he gave our church $136,000 against the total cost. And my brothers and sisters, ever since that day, the favor of God has shined on us because, hear me, if you take care of God's people, if you do right towards God's people, there's no way that God will forsake you. You may be there 38 years. Everybody else may get in front of you, but he knows your case, and he's going to show up right on time. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right. We thank God for you, Bishop Jefferson, and I know you gave instructions for them to cash out one of us, but we want them to be a blessing to you. We feel like you've given us a wealth of information and treasure, and believe it or not, with the message you brought, it really touches home with what we've been talking about uh, for the last two or three weeks. We talked about passing the the baton, and last week we we touched on proper transition. You may have been on the show. So can you give us your cash app? And if you won't let them bless you, will you at least give the church's cash app so that they can send an offering in that facet? Well, here I go. I'm going to take my spiritual authority. The spirit and the prophet is subject to the prophet, I guess, or subject to the spirit, the spirit is subject to the spirit. However it goes, now you got to be going. But because <laughs> I'm the one who asked first, here I go. Okay. Because I'm the one who had the mic, I'm going okay. back to what I said. I want you all to cash at Bishop Elect Richards, cash at Apostle Whitlow, cash at Apostle Vincent, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. All right. Well, I can't fight with that because I have to respect the authority of which God has placed over you. Uh, my brothers and my sisters to the panel, anybody want to make any comments? And I can make the comments. Please put your cash app out so that everybody would know how to cash app you. For those of you, uh, I don't know if Apostle Whitlow or Sister Kimmy Kim is on any one of the feeds or on any one of the pages, drop your cash app in that, in that feed right there so that they would see it. Uh, Apostle Smith, I put in cash app Pentecostal Kids for you already. So you're hey, covered. Hey, Apostle, Apostle uh, uh, Bishop Elect. Yes, sir. Bishop Elect Richards. Yes, sir. I don't want anybody, if, if you can, don't try to give no less than $25 to each one of these ministries. Uh, $25 or more, but no less than $25 on tonight in the name of Jesus. Give 
and it shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, good measure, that men will give unto you. I trust me, if you do it before this year's out, whatever your case is, I promise you, and one pastor said, if I be a man of God, and I am, I promise you, before this year is over, God will come to your rescue. Thank you. Amen. Bishop Jefferson, I thank you for this word tonight. Amen. God always sends a word in due season. I tell you, when you need to hear from him, he will come and speak to you. And you were led tonight not only in the word of God, but Amen. in that testimony tonight, you were laid. Yeah. And, and tonight and tomorrow, I'm to God, the my, testimony, my prayer to God is going to be, Lord, connect me with the right person that's going to bring Amen. me out. I'll have to go to Yes. Make us debt free. I yes, sir. You. Or be a lad of the spirit, because that has been my prayer. Lord, get us out of total debt. But now tonight, my prayer is going to change. And I'm going to say, Lord, lead me or bring the right person that's going to help it to happen. Yes. I thank yes, you sir. so much. My faith has been increased. Thank you, Bishop. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Any uh, Apostle Whitlow? I I I have to concur with Apostle Smith. Uh, you have really blessed us as you always do, because we're able to listen to you so often, and and we we get the different textures of word that the Lord allows you to share. And I I, I can't speak for anyone else, but I specifically tonight, this word was designed not for the listening audience, but for those that cater to the listening audience, which are those who are on the podcast itself. Uh, so I'm grateful to you because I, too, like Apostle Vincent L. Smith, have been praying that the Lord would connect me with that individual who can cause my dreams to become a reality. Because one of the greatest things I've been talking about, and I even mentioned it, tonight while I was at work, that I have a passion for worship, and I want to do a worship project so bad. And I know that the Bible says that money answers all things. So to get into the studio and to do the things that need to be done, it takes just that. So you even sharing that, it it really strengthens and encourages my heart. But more than that, it really encourages and increases my faith. I say thank you. Uh, the fact that God knows my case is reassuring to me. Thank you, thank you, and again I say thank you. Amen. And by the way, right. what's your cash app, possibly to everybody? My, my yeah, cash app yeah. is my cash app is Apostle Whitlow. That is dollar sign A P O S T L E W H I T L O W Apostle Whitlow. Amen. All right, P- Pentecostal kid dollar sign Pentecostal kid dollar sign Apostle Whitlow and Bishop Elect Richards. Before I go, uh, if, if I may, please, Bishop, and I beg your pardon. I'm just gonna uh, take this executive privilege as the host of the radio show. I need to get your spiritual daughter on here to have a few words before I step up along with Sister Kim and Kim, and I'll come behind is lady, you. Is, 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 is Lady Kim on here? Lady Kim is on here, but I want to Evangelist Henderson to come first before Lady Kim. I don't put her last oh, for any reason. She's the she rock and the one holding all mm-hmm. control. So I, I I always save the cleanup battle for that time when we get the bases loaded so she can swing <laughs> for the center. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Bishop, I just want to say thank you for that anointed word tonight. Truly, that was a rhema word from the Lord, and I just know that it was was timely. It was the will of God for that message tonight, 
and I know that it touched not only myself, but everyone that heard it on tonight, and I know the best is yet to come for you. Press down, shaking together, and running over, so the Lord bless you for distributing the word of God to his people tonight, and truly, I was truly blessed, and I thank the Lord for you, in Jesus' name. Bless you. Bless you. Dr. Robinson? I do apologize. I was on mute as normal. I just want to thank you so much for that wonderful message. You're telling us that um, persevere really works. And when you have the faith in God and you just keep your eyes while you're walking on water on him, everything will be all right. So thank you for that word and the wonderful testimony. Are you okay, Oh, my cash app is Elation Magazine. Wait a minute, spell that. Sure. E L A T I O N Magazine. And now, one day I would love to um, interview you and have you as a feature pastor for 2021. You have a beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. uh, message. And persevering. Well, magazine. I mean, to know I, I, that I, I, you it, almost it, it's kind of late for me. Your Ma- How do you spell magazine, Lady Kim? Oh, sure. M A G A Z I N E. Well, you know, it's kind of late at night, so, you know, I, I get kind of my mind. Oh, it's all good. Okay, I got it. <laughs> sure, Elation sure. Magazine. Y'all are fine. Got you. Okay. All right. Thank all you so much. Watch this. Everybody in favor of Bishop uh, Jefferson being featured in Elation Magazine. Let me hear you say I. I. Well, don't mind that. Y'all better get up here and stay out before I come through this radio and have to get off for you. No, no. All, 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 those not, all those not in favor say nay, nay. Uh-huh. <laughs> the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Well, listen, my, my, my cash app is my cash app is cash app E-D. Oh, no, I'll give you the other one. I already have the pastor's corner. Cash app pastor's corner. That's Cash App, P A S T O R S C O R N E R. And I want to say right, this man. while you I so appreciate the word that you, said, that you shared because about six days ago, I decided, and like the rest of them, I hit a bump in the road financially where things just slowed down. And I bless God for how He blessed our ministry and the church. We'll be celebrating our first year. Uh, on New Year's Eve, but for me, as in a, from a personal standpoint, finances seem to have depleted to a certain degree, and I'm still working on some things to pull some money in, but I decided to do what's called a money affirmation, and you heard the scripture before, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health as thy soul prosper. Based on that scripture, my confession will be this, and this is seven times a day I say this, and I'll share it with whoever wants it. I say to myself, I am a money magnet for wealth and money. I accept the fact that money is a positive force for good, and I embrace being rich spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and financially in Jesus' name. That's my confession. So with that being said, we're going to move forward, and we're going to continue this. We have a few minutes left. Uh, anybody have any questions that they want to ask? Any? Because I mean, there's so much going through my mind right now. We were talking about passing the baton. We were talking about transitions, and I do appreciate the fact, sir, that you shared your testimony with us. Because so many times, a lot of us are looking for God to transition us into position. In many cases, they're not even ready for it. Well, the truth of the matter is, if we were ready for the position, we probably wouldn't transition into it. Anybody agree or disagree with that? I'm getting crickets tonight. I don't understand what happened, Bishop. They, don't want, uh, they, they started no, pitching crickets to me. Ain't, ain't no cricket with me, but I, I'm still lost in this word we just got. That's I, it. I'm, Amen. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not up in this word we just got. And, and I, I'm really thinking now, Lord, uh, and, and I'm going to try it here to the baton, but I, I'm saying, Lord, who, 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 who am I going to catch this financial baton from? Who, who is it, Lord, that you have running with the money? Because one thing I know is that, is that giving it shall be given unto you. Good treasure for us to take it together. Shall men give unto you? A lot of times we're spending a lot of time asking. 
Amen. I agree somebody with that 100%. Said, well, somebody said somewhere with a bank card that can try to whatever that you need will be taken care of. That's who I'm asking God to hook me up with. I'm not asking him to hook me up with nobody that's going to help me with something that's going to just get me by today. I need God to hook me up with that person that's going to bring it to the period and say it's all over. And I'm yeah. not looking for you to do nothing for me. I just want to do this because the church, did y'all hear what he said about the man? Yes, I want to help you because the church, they are not going. And that's the very word. God spoke to me last week. He said, do not worry. The church will not go. And I immediately thought about my father. My father's saying was, don't worry about going, going under. We're too busy going over. Amen. And I Amen. said, Lord, I need to see the bridge that takes us over now and do great things in the midst of it. Amen. Yes, sir. All right. I didn't send my cash out to everybody, but Sister Kimmy Kim, because uh, it won't pop up. I want to make sure I got her cash out right. Is it Elation Magazine? Yes, it's Elation Magazine. E-L-A-T-I-O-N-L-A-G-A-Z-I-N-E. You got it. Is it one word? But I just love the word. You just... Yeah. Thank you, pardon? I see you blessed me so much with your word. That was amazing. Okay, I'm I'm talking about your cash app. It's not working. It's not pulling up. Okay. Um, is it two, you may is it have two different to words? use my telephone number. Um, okay, let me, let, me, let me try that while I got you here right quick, and then I'll be through with everybody. I won't, bu- I won't buddy no more. Uh, sorry about will, that. Yeah, you, are, yes, you, you are a you are Can you give me nice what's your number? 314. What's your number? 314. Sure, 314-546. Okay, did you say 314? Yes. All right, 546. 546. Uh-huh. 8567. Eight. There you are. All right. You're so a All blessing. Right. Thank you so much. Well, we've got 15 minutes left, so let's, uh, you know, we've heard a great word. There's not a lot we're going to add to it. I'm going to get comments from everybody, then we're going to begin our shutdown. Bishop Jefferson, don't go anywhere. We always do a call. Uh, we do a call to salvation and discipleship at the end of each show. So after everybody's had a chance to have their comments, I'm going to ask and request of you that you would do a call to salvation. Uh, and invite those who may not know Jesus Christ and the pardoning of their sins, the opportunity to receive him as Lord and Savior. So without further ado, let me go to the ladies first. Let me start with uh, Evangelist Henderson. And I want to say, Evangelist, before you begin, uh, please don't think that I overlooked you in introducing your pastor and bishop. I went by the order by which I met him, Apostle Smith, so I only thought it right and appropriate that I have Pastor Smith, make that introduction. And I do hope you understand that. If it offended you, I will apologize to you. No, sir. No, sir. Not at all. Amen. I thank and I praise God for this message tonight and the man of God tonight, my pastor. I thank and I praise God for that. Just the title alone, God Knows Your Case. And, you know, I'm so glad that he knows our case. He knows us individually. He knows us intimately. He knows everything about us. 
And that is just a treasure to know that we have a God and serve a God that knows everything about us. And I love the scripture check that was given on tonight, Jeremiah 29, 11, that he knows the plans that he has for us. And there's good plans and not evil to give us a hope and a future in him and expect it in. And so um, I'm just encouraged that God has a plan for each one of our lives. You know, as we line up with that plan, we will see the destiny that God has prepared for us. And I, I'm just so grateful for this work tonight. And it's just re- resonating in my heart and in my spirit that it is a rainbow word tonight. And, and I'm just praising him for what he's doing and what he's yet going to do. So I just want to encourage everyone listening to expect God to move on this word because the word, when it goes out, it never returns void. There was a reason for the word. There was a reason for the testimony. And God is doing great and mighty things. So expect God to move as you obey the man of God, the prophet of God, none other than Bishop God bless you and be with me. Amen. I'm going to move next to you. Uh, Dr. Kim Robinson, please take your phone off mute. Uh, your final comments as we move toward the end of today's special broadcast. Okay. Dr. Kimmy Kim? Yes, hi. Thank you so much. I mean, my final thoughts for tonight is no matter what you see, trust the process and continue on focusing on the Lord because one thing I have always um, remember as a believer and still learning, through your mess, there is a message and through your pressure, their praise, and through your blessing, and then it's, it's, I mean, yeah, anyways, just don't give up, (laughs) that is my main point, hallelujah, I love the message on tonight, I'm Brother Jefferson, and please, please, thank you so much for that, and uh, I I pray that everything is uh, well with you, and happy holidays. Right, Uh, Apostle Whitlow? Uh, I, I said my piece, so you know me. My closing statement is simple. Go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. All right, and finally, Apostle Apostle Smith. What can we say to these things? Right, if now. God be for us, who can be against us? He will do just what he said. The Lord bless you all. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you joining us tonight. I'm going to close with this, and I'm not going to use my usual close because I want to say the final say and benediction uh, for uh, Bishop Jefferson. But I will say this. Jeremiah, uh, I believe it's 333, says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Bottom line is simply this. Since Jesus knows my case, it would be smart for me to call on him and plead my case and get a not guilty verdict for where I messed up and get the blessing of the Lord which add make and which addeth no sorrow, which maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. It's a win win for me. Without further ado. Bishop Derek Jefferson for the final say and the benediction. Just to give me get the song ready when he finishes, we're going to move right out of here. Thank you once again for allowing us to speak to uh, your audience tonight. Pray that something was said to uplift and encourage someone. If there's anyone in the sound of my voice who do not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, confess him with your mouth, believe on him in your heart. And he will do the rest. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that is you, me, whosoever believes in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. I want to say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without us. Thank you for everyone in the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, tonight as we lie down, Lord, that the angels cover us. Give us another day, Lord, to wake up, to glorify your name, to live for you, to witness for you. To help somebody, oh God, that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. And Father, whatever you do, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll get us all ready for that great day, that great celebration where the dead in Christ is going to rise. We who are alive and remain are going to be caught up 
And we're going to be with you forever. And that's what we live for, oh God, for eternal life. Now, God, bless every one of us tonight. And I say, Lord, now, whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without us. Use us for your glory. We shall have a praise and thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Good night, everyone. I love you with the love of God. Bless you, man of God. Bless you. Thank you so much, man of God. Bless you. As we celebrate Christmas all over the world, we come with a simple reminder. Don't forget Jesus, the Savior of the world. Don't forget he is the reason for it all. Let's sing it, friends. Yo. He's a real-